it's a welcome in or a welcome back. It's a monkey mar. Before we get into today's video, please make sure you click the like, the subscribe, and the bell for notifications. Uh, hey guys, welcome in. In my live last night, I went over the latest on what the law enforcement were saying regarding losing track of Brian Laundry. So I want to go ahead and hit on uh, this article and then I am going to play the video that I played from Brian Enton in my live last night in case anyone missed it. So let's get into the excuses of why Brian Laundry got away from the police. And with that guys, uh, let's get into it. This was out October 30th, 2021. 7 a.m. Eastern. It is 12.20 p.m. on November 2nd, 2021. Northport Police Chief Defends Agency Performance in Gabby Petito Brian Laundry Case. So here we've got the local law enforcement chiefs, including from the left, Venice Police Captain Charles Thorpe, Sarasota Schools Police Chief Tem Enos, Sarasota County Sheriff Kurt Hoffman, and Northport Police Chief Todd Garrison appeared Friday at the South County Tiger Bay Club luncheon in Venice. Thorpe stood in for retiring Venice Police Chief uh, Tom uh, Matt Muller, who was sick. Thorpe is stated to succeed him as Venice Police Chief in January. Of Venice, Florida. Northport Police Chief Todd Garrison told members of the South County Tiger Bay Club that once he learned his surveillance team mistook Roberta Laundry for her son Brian Laundry, it was important for the agency to admit the error. As a leader, what do I do? Garrison said. Do I not tell the public what's going on? Do we conceal it? Cover it up? No. People want open a transparency and honesty from their law enforcement officials, he added. Yes, we made a mistake. It was a human error, but I still stand behind my team. Garrison was one of the four local law enforcement leaders on a panel that included the Sarasota School Schools Police Chief Tim Enos, Sarasota County Sheriff Kurt Hoffman, Venice Police Captain Charles Storp, who stood in for retiring Venice Police Chief Tom Matt Muller, who was sick. Moderator Lauren Benson asked Garrison about the search for laundry that got national media attention midway through a program that also touched on topics ranging from homeless outreach efforts to traffic control. The investigation involving Brian Laundry, Garrison noted that for the first three and a half days, the investigation involving Laundry, which started with a missing persons report filed in Suffolk County, New York, Northport Police operated in a support role. What a lot of people don't know in June, Gabby and Brian moved out of their location and put a lot of stuff into storage and they changed their address and moved to New York. And from there, they left for their cross-country adventure, Garrison said. That I did not know. I did not know that they were moving back to New York and then they were going to go on their cross-country, go spend some time in Oregon and Obviously, maybe they were going back to New York, and that is why the belongings are in storage. I personally have yet to see the storage unit. I may be missing it, but I haven't seen it. That Wednesday afternoon, Northport, working in concert with the FBI, became the lead agency on what was still technically a zero. That Wednesday afternoon, Northport, working in concert with the FBI, became the lead agency on what was still technically a search for Petito. Now we know that. By the time we became the lead agency, Brian had already left 
the house and presumably had already been deceased out in the Carlton Reserve, Garrison said. We are out there in the public for making a human error. The surveillance team told me Chief Brian was seen going inside the house, he added. So that Thursday when Garrison told media that he knew where laundry was, it was 100% in my belief that what the team told me was accurate and Brian was outside the house. Later on, we found out that Brian had left the house and now the parents on Friday wanted to report him missing, Garrison said. There was nobody more surprised about that than me. In fact, when my officers went out to the house to do the report with the FBI, I sat with the deputy chief in my office hoping they would find Brian hiding in a back bedroom. He said, I was hoping maybe it was a ploy. It wasn't. Let's go ahead and look at some pictures that were from Gabby's vigil that I have actually never seen before. And then after this, guys, we will check out the video that I played in my live last night. And after that, oh, we will uh, wrap it up. My final thoughts on the Brian Lange search until the end and refinding his remains, I think it was very sloppy. I feel that if those remains were Brian's and they found him and they brought his remains in, I do not understand if the fabrics, the socks, the lighter, the water bottles, if they did belong to him, how they miss those items being so close. And I just feel like it was done sloppy to kind of end it and to stop the media frenzy, but that might actually have made it a little worse and it will keep it uh, going. I pray that Gabby is somehow finding peace and she is resting and that is all that I am going to say about uh, this matter. Do you know where Brian Laundry is right now? Yes. That was Northport Police Chief Todd Garrison back on September 16th when he said he knew where Brian Laundry was. That turned out not to be the case with the department admitting it thought it had eyes on Brian, but it was actually Brian's mom, Roberta. And now the chief clarifying the mistake even further. The Sarasota Herald Tribune reporting the chief said at a town hall on Friday, as a leader, what do I do? Do I not tell the public what's going on? Do we conceal it, cover it up? No, people want open transparency and honesty from their law enforcement officials. Yes, we made a mistake, it was human error, but I still stand behind my team. The chief also said that by the time Northport PD became the lead agency on the case, Brian had already left his parents' house and was presumably already dead in the Carlton Reserve. The Sarasota County Sheriff, Kurt Hoffman, also spoke at the forum, defending the chief and saying of laundry, that guy went out there and by all accounts probably committed suicide, and he was right out there where we thought he was. There was four feet of water out there at the time. And so far, the FBI has not released Brian Laundrie's official cause of death, and there is no real timeline uh, when we will finally get that information. Ruta Bay. Brian, do we have any more information on that restaurant where the couple was seen fighting? Yeah, that would be the restaurant in Jackson, Wyoming, Mary Piglet's. Still a lot of questions about whether that fight even actually happened. Uh, early on, there was the witness who said uh, that she saw a fight. She gave her account on social media. The manager told us last week when we were there that there was no fight, uh, that that was all made up and that it was very, very calm when the couple uh, went to visit. Uh, unfortunately, there's no surveillance video available from that restaurant, so we still don't know for sure exactly what happened. And what is the latest with that note? notebook and that could hold so many clues to this case the notebook that was recovered from the reserve Absolutely. I mean, that could really be critical. The latest uh, is that police say they believe it is salvageable. They believe there is information in it that could be helpful to the investigation. We know that it's in the hands of the FBI right now, but still uh, they're not releasing exactly what is inside the notebook. All right, Brian Etten, I know you will stay on it and keep us updated. Thank you. Thanks for today. All right, guys, drop them comments, drop them opinions. And with that, it is a wrap. I want to thank you all for coming in. Thank you for watching. Please like or dislike whichever you prefer and subscribe. Everyone have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world. And stay vigilant. I am out.